beyond what 9-11 because it will be a permanent damage that we'll never recover from. Which leads me to tell you that government zero, no borders, no language, no culture, is the sum total of all of the books I've ever written. And I'm warning you about the massive dangers currently leading to the demise of our nation. I've been warning you for decades. I've just proven to you I have. In Government Zero, I'm sounding the alarm about how progressives have joined with radical Islamists and are working together towards similar ends to destroy Western civilization and remake it in their own respective images. And I warn you in this book that these two dark forces are transforming our once free republic into a socialist third world dictatorship ruled by government zero absolute government and zero representation and in my book government zero i combine in-depth analysis with biting comment and i cut through mainstream media propaganda to reveal an all-out attack on our borders language and culture by progressive travelers who have hijacked public policy from national defense to immigration to public education. In my book, you will find out everything you need to know about this terrifying agenda to weaken the U.S. military, cripple the American economy, subvert basic American liberties such as freedom of speech, and destroy the international world order. And there is no time to lose. The progressive Islamist agenda advanced into every public space from the White House to the military to your local public school. If America is to survive, it has to be stopped. And I, Michael Savage, have a plan. And it's all in my book, Government Zero, which at this time is only available on Amazon.com. It will not be out until October of 2015. But I had to tell you about it because if I could, I'd rush the book out now. Unfortunately, they can't do it. I've never seen anything like what this retrovirus in the White House has done to us, is doing to us, and moreover, what he might be planning in his, in his mad, mad, mad way to do to this nation. We're being beaten to death on a daily basis. And now we return to regular programming on the Savage Nation. We're talking about the 60s weren't all bad and how free spirits were easily manipulated by the communist left and how many of them are now running the government, the media, you name it. The university has certainly been penetrated by these psychos. And here we are living through it. So what do we do about it? How did you change? What did you change? If you're a free spirit, you listen to the show, but you're somewhat conservative politically. Why? When? How did that? When did you open your eyes? When? When did you open your eyes? KSFO, San Francisco, Mr. Christian, welcome to the program. Tell us your story. Well, uh... The Lord works in mysterious ways. Uh, my eyes got open on an acid trip, believe that or not. Uh, I grew up a black, God-fearing Baptist. At the age of 17, my church wanted to make me a deacon, but I was too enamored with beautiful girls, and I decided I wasn't going to be a hypocrite, neither was I getting married, so no deacon. I then went to uh, computer IT school, worked for NASA when when, um, when Martin Luther King got killed, JFK, and Bobby Kennedy, I decided to go to Harvard Law School to become a uh, Democratic president. I became dis, um, disillusioned with law practice, and I traveled to all 48 states and ended up in uh, San Francisco, Haight-Ashbury. That was 1976. <laughs> Wait a minute, slow down. I, I got here to this wonderful city in 74, so we arrived at about the same place, about the same time, with a very similar background. And what happened to you since? Well, it was a wonderful city at that time. You could go anywhere from Oakland Hills, anywhere in a half an hour, no problem. Right. Um, well, I started commune right there in Haight-Ashbury, and I had two wives, and uh, it lasted for years. I had about four houses and about 30 people, and I had a clothing optional party one night, and I ended up making love to my two wives, and I don't want to get too graphic, but uh, three other women that day, and as I was taking the other woman home, the last woman, um, for the full moon night, I'd, I'd done acid for the first time, and uh, I was overwhelmed with with what God had given me, and I did give God the credit uh, for all the attraction that I had, and 
I turned my life back to Christ that night. And uh, I started teaching the Bible and learning the Bible, then teaching the Bible. And uh, I left the commune and became a preacher with, and, you know, was an associate pastor of the church and different things like that, radio ministry. Um, so what, what do you do today? What, what, what do you currently do? What I do today, uh, uh, Prophet Savage, is uh, I'm a prophet, but I'm also right now uh, trading options. <laughs> oh, you got all bases covered, Mr. Christian, don't you? Well, I uh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, thank you for your amazing story. All I can say is it's quite a story. It would make for an interesting uh, uh, a movie. I don't know how much of it was real, but we all enjoyed it. Quite a life. I'd like to watch those home movies. I wonder if I can get those discs. That transition. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Oh, my God. I wouldn't. All right, welcome back. We don't have much time here uh, to end out hour two of the Savage Nation. The fact of the matter is uh, the news is so overwhelmingly threatening the Muslim invasion of the West is beyond comprehension and the leadership if there is any is paralyzed with fear pretending that this is a humanitarian crisis that came out of nowhere when in fact their very liberal policies created it especially the Arab Spring policies of Hillary Clinton and the migrants if they are not stopped will overwhelm Europe and America and they can be stopped, they can be contained in, in very safe places, fed, clothed, housing built. They can be protected from ISIS. That's what a military is for. Entire regions of Syria can be carved out for them. They don't belong here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discussion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Jimi Hendrix is one of the few people from the 60s I'd like to actually meet. I actually think I met him after he was dead. You want to get into bizarro behavior and thinking? I'll give it to you right now. I'm not afraid of anything. I mean, truth is, I don't care what people say about me, to be honest. Lilliputians, all of them. Anyone who ridicules Michael Savage doesn't know me, doesn't know the body of my work. They're Lilliputians. They're jealous, period, end of story. So I pay no attention to them. But I will tell you a story that, that's amazing. I told you that the 60s weren't all bad. I told you I was a free spirit who changed when I left the mainland and moved to Hawaii for one year. Uh, I thought for one year to earn a master's degree and then come back and teach high school. And my, my life forever took a change uh, there. And I was looking at home movies that I put together. I, I collected them for years. I've been collecting all my eights and super eights in boxes and they've been sitting up in a location. I've been meaning to do something with them for my archives or whatever. I, I never knew what to do with them. And I met a gentleman who does this professional. And I knew him for three years now. I never brought the movies over because I didn't know how to organize them. So he did this for me. He took 300 little boxes, cleaned out the mold from some of them because they get moldy, believe it or not. These Super 8 movies get moldy. And he made uh, seven discs. A, I don't know how many. Ten discs. Two, five. And they're called Savage Family Home Movies. Eight millimeter movies of family, friends, work, travels, and activities. Volume one is 1967, 68. And then something happens toward the end of that disc where I go from a black and white person to a color person. And it closes with me uh, and my young wife kind of dancing on the rooftop of a research hospital in Honolulu where I was working 
on my degree. And my Hindu friend Prasad was there and we linked arms. And, you know, people just do this the big thing in the ocean, the eternal horizon in the background, representing my new life. And I said to myself, you know, the 60s were not really all bad. It's easy to categorize and say, oh, 60s were bad. The hippies destroyed the world. But it actually enabled millions of us, including myself, to become free of spirits. But here is the rub. Here is the problem. A free spirit is more easily manipulated. A free spirit is more easily penetrated. A free spirit is more easily manipulated and penetrated than is a rigid spirit. And the communists who were ever present entered the spirits of the time and destroyed the minds of millions of Americans to this day. And they did so just as retroviruses infect humans, causing the common cold and AIDS, for example. And then I concluded by saying Obama is like a retrovirus to America. He has infected the body politic with his hateful anti-American views and invaded many other cells or people with his nation and world destructive ideas. And I concluded by telling you that you should understand the prognosis is very bad because as the retrovirus invades healthy cells, along with the cell's own genes, it produces the proteins required to assemble new copies of the invading virus. And it is difficult to detect the virus until it has infected the host, at which point the infection will persist indefinitely. That's what I did in hours one and two. And then I opened uh, the show up to callers where I said to you, were you a 60s hippie or free spirit who later became somewhat politically conservative? Why did it happen and when did it happen? And I've been having a wonderful show thus far. And I hope to continue doing so, as well as uh, giving you the breaking news that seems to emerge. And there's a little bit of breaking news. But, you know, let me tell you something about breaking news. You can get it faster than I can tell it to you unless I find it first through an obscure website. You go to a few websites, you, you see the headlines. So you want me to be a parrot like others and sit here and read a headline and tell you what you could read yourself? I'm not going to do it. They're all part of the cartel. They're all part of a certain cartel in radio and the Internet. They are all friends. They take care of each other. It's a guild. I'm not a part of the guild. And so I've decided to go my own way again. I'm going to follow my own, my own intuition, my own instincts. And just the way I began in radio is how I'm going to transition in the last years of radio. I'm going to do my shows my way. Don't care what anyone else is doing. Don't listen to them. Not interested. All I care about is you and what you think. You're the only thing that matters to me is my audience when I'm on the radio. And so I think this is intriguing today. Because there's an old adage in radio, well, it's, it goes back beyond that. William Burroughs, the great nature, nature writer, said that if you bait your hook with your heart, the fish will always bite. And what that means in radio is, and I learned this the first day in radio, is that if the host is excited by a subject, he'll transmit that excitement to the audience and they will be excited and they'll respond. And you can tell... You can tell when it's fake. You can tell when it's fake righteous indignation. You can tell when it's just for effect because all of you are much smarter than people think you are. You're smarter than uh, politicians think you are and you're smarter than so-called conservative hosts think you are. You can read right through them because you all have very good ears. And point blank, that's why I'm going to follow my own path again. That's all. I'm going to just follow my own path. So here I have in my hands, I just got these to this morning. I sent my assistant to pick them up an hour before the show. I could not stop watching disc one. My father in his store, old friends of mine, some of whom I haven't seen for forever, some of whom I actually still know to this day, uh, doing things on a beach in, on, in Fire Island, I don't even want to repeat. But uh, they did it. I didn't do it. I swear to God, it's amazing to me. And, and by the way, it's funny to me that some of the guys I knew who were into like experimental drugs then, I was not into it. They're still into it. And they're still living. They're still drug addicts. One of them's even in, in, in the business, illegal. Now he sells marijuana illegally. You hear this? The world has changed. But I think that marijuana had a lot to do with how people got stuck in the doxies of the time. Marijuana is a very toxic drug. It's a very disabling drug. It's a mentally d dissembling drug. And I always had a, a, a harp for a brain or a Stradivarius for a brain, never a banjo. And I found that the people who, th who thrived on marijuana had a banjo for a brain, one or two strings, and it didn't affect them that much. Me, I didn't like it. I never liked the drug. It was a horrendous drug. It always induced uh, terrible feelings in me and physical reactions. I never liked the stuff. And I have not uh, imbibed in that poison for 30 years. I recommend you consider carefully what you do and what you put into your body. 
But having put that aside, please, that what I get 